in Kenya, we continue to record very high maternal mortality and number one killer is postpartum hemorrhage. We have seen women going to hostels and not coming back. And we have seen midwives just stopping to conduct deliveries because of their experience with postpartum hemorrhage. It is a scary moment when a woman starts bleeding after delivery. We started with uterine balloon tamponade, UBT, uh, 10 years ago. There, there are a couple of reasons as to why it's not found everywhere in the world. The first reason is that um, there just aren't enough people on this earth yet that respect women the way women deserve to be respected and that put women's health and survival as a priority. And the reality is it remains the biggest health disparity on earth, which is the survival of women when they become pregnant in, um, in poor countries versus the developed world versus wealthy countries. It's fairly clear that just dropping in and sprinkling uterine balloons around all by itself doesn't make a difference in saving women's lives. People need to be trained. People need to be rewarded for saving a life in whatever way is appropriate for their context. People need to have interventions integrated into their care. They need to have supplies, so whether it be uterine balloon or anti-shock trousers, they need to be available. So systems um, are really lagging behind when it comes to what's necessary to save women's lives. One day, one of my residents, uh, along with the uh, senior resident, they operated a case they did cesarean section and uh, they said that ma'am we have closed it we are very sure about the angles uh, but patient is bleeding suddenly and I rushed by the time I reached there it was as if you know you open a tap and that kind of blood was coming out and uterus was totally atoned. Uh, when I came I looked at the anesthesiologist and he there's a way to tell you know not to let anybody else know means no blood pressure, no pulse. So then all I remembered was Dr. Burke's balloon at that time. So I just got that balloon and I inserted it out of desperation that I have to save this woman. 500 cc I realized that the bleeding is reducing. And I, I just want the bleeding to stop completely because I was sure that if I don't stop it, she's going to die. So then I kept inserting. This is the highest uh, fluid I have inserted in my first case. So 800 ml and bleeding ceased. And then anesthesiologist was very happy, pulse is there, pulse is there. And this felt like a miracle to us, you know. Living in a country like mine, uh, it is almost impossible. And we uh, see every day it's near about 300 to 500. Only antenatal checkup. And uh, together with the gynae OPDs, it's almost six, 700 per day. Usually we have birth from uh, around 50 to 70 deliveries a day. And PPH uh, is not that uncommon. It's very common, I think. But most of the time, this is one PPH, one to two PPH maybe sometimes. And Professor Thomas introduces uh, with uh, his packet of uh, CBT and that is uh, really very helpful where it is limited resources are there. This is really very effective because this is very, very cheap. In Colombia, our history is not easy. We have been involved in a many uh, work in a very difficult condition for us with with the narco traffic yeah the drugs uh, cartels every family in colombia um, lost maybe one person nobody in in the rest of the world in that moment wanted to come here no industries no business 
or to invest in us. Then we decide to improve our business and the resilience and the capacity to come back and the capacity to create a new world for us. I think that this is very important for the rest of the world because it's now um, the hospital. It's the same of other hospital in the United States. We reduce uh, the maternal mortality in a 50% and we have the possibility to educate in the same way our PPH bundle. We discovered that other people had been working in the same way. Then we decided to try to contact them, inclusive Dr. Burke. Uh, he decided that we could be a good team to train more people around the world. And then we began to decide of this crazy idea. In the last 20 years, we see a huge shift of the ecology of human birth, if you wish, that many, many more women uh, have decided not to give birth at home. They're going to facilities. So that opens the possibility to deal with this complication that often comes like a, a lightning bolt. A healthy 22-year-old woman gives birth to a, her first child and everything is fine, everybody's happy, but then she bleeds and bleeds and bleeds and bleeds until it's too late. So, so a simplified, standardized approach we are convinced that this is the time to do that for postpartum hemorrhage. And what we really want to do is to start a global movement to save many more women from leading to death after childbirth. Whenever we are saying about Thomas, Professor Thomas, that kit, everybody is saying, oh, we also need that because that will be much easier. They don't have to run one place for the condoms, another place for the catheter. Just take out that one packet and one the drip, that's it that I think we are more strongly should advocate all those health workers in the peripheral in Nepal in other countries also we definitely need the passion about saving mothers otherwise it won't work so in the meanwhile Dr. Berg said that we're going to do a multi centric study so I collected 10 medical colleges very high facilities with, with the workload of 10,000 12,000 deliveries and then we said uh, let's try this okay so this is how we started this project and uh, we kept going and uh, you see we did uh, 246 cases in which only 6 deaths have been there where all these cases could have died because uh, almost 90% of cases were in grade 3, grade 4 shock. It's very important for us to recognize we all have a role to play. It's not something for pregnant women to figure out on their own. It's for us as a species and at a very fundamental level it's for us to understand that this is a time that is one of the most beautiful times of life, one of the most uh, vulnerable times of life, but one that we still don't give the attention that it deserves. So I still remember some of the women. Mm. I mean, we did a lot of good, but it's it's easier to remember the ones that we failed to save. It's something that you don't want to remember as a nurse or as a midwife. And more so, when you look at the body going, and you know this is something we could have prevented, and we can do something. If only the society that these women come from can decide that enough is enough.